So if we take a look at the technology stack here for Ignition as an historian, the incoming data streams there from the left uh, inside this diagram are generally tag data that's coming in from, it could be anything, but often that's coming from PLCs, RTUs, uh, remote units that have tags inside the devices themselves and do tag-based communication. Those data streams could come from other places and you can store anything you want inside tags uh, as long as they're standard variable types. Once they get to ignition, you can choose what you want to do with them. So you can see at the top, there's the event historian and it's a little bit hard to see, but in that blue box, it mentions SQL bridge transaction groups that's the typical way to do event logging inside Ignition. So if you have a specific event you wanna trigger on, some process is complete, your batch run has just finished, uh, you have a piece of luggage that's just moved from one spot to another spot, and you want to get a record of that, that maybe you want to later report on, uh, or you want time periods in there, you want areas where you can do aggregations from a start to an end time, uh, going through that event historian is the way to do those things. And often those records that are going into event historian are later paired up on dashboards with tag historian information uh, that's streaming real time as well. So that event historian data goes to SQL databases. That is the direct place that it is being written to. Uh, if you take a look down at tag historian, you see the SQL database engine, internal storage engine, other storage engines. But engine isn't an official term from inductive automation. Uh, I used that for this webinar just to make it more clear what those are doing, but those basically plug into our tag historian. And those are different ways to get the data into some storage medium. So through the SQL database engine, it goes into SQL databases. We added this internal storage engine, which a lot of folks don't realize, uh, but that's built directly into Ignition, starting with Ignition 8.1. And that allows you to use storage inside Ignition itself without a database connected. Now that's intended for small sets of data storage. It's intended for small data sets, small numbers of tags. Uh, and basically what we did is we took the one week storage from Edge and we rolled that into the main Ignition product. So if you're doing very small amounts of historian, you can use that. We recommend having that set to auto truncate as well, uh, because it's not a full SQL database. It doesn't have the full type of optimizations that you have um, inside SQL databases. It's not really intended for being a big historian, but if you've got a small application, and you don't need much and you need a week of history or even a month of history uh, that you want to show in some charts and graphs and you just have a handful of tags, that internal storage engine can be a really nice thing to just have available so you often don't even need a database connected. Uh, you also, if you're using that internal storage engine, generally it'll, it'll be folks who don't have any event type of history to store because that event history does go into a SQL database. Uh, and so if you have event history, you're going to have a SQL database connected anyway, you might as well use it. Uh, but that internal storage engine, as I said, is available starting in Ignition 8.1. And then we have other storage engines. So anyone who writes a module that plugs into our tag historian can send that information out wherever they want to, really. Um, so that's what we call our data syncs here. And if you were to write a module, you could do that. Most folks who are in integration don't necessarily have a programming background or, or not a computer programming background or a Java background. Uh, and so often it makes sense just to leverage what some module developers have created if you want to or you need to use these other storage engines. Uh, there are a couple of examples that we have and um, that we, we plug into um, and one that's coming up as well uh, if you're going into the cloud, there's the time series insights uh, that is set up for Azure and then um, AWS has uh, their site-wise set up. Um, both of those have data structure. One of these questions that we had come in before the webinar, someone was asking about um, setting up structured data uh, in a way that is going to plug in where you have other things that are tying into the historian. 
Uh, if you are using Azure AWS as your place of choice for that structured data, those data structures from UDTs inside Ignition come through and stream through automatically to those systems if you are using those modules um, or, or those technology stacks. So there's some, uh, if, you, if you're taking a look at those, uh, give us a call. Um, we're happy to walk you through the options because there are actually a lot of different options. So you can use those modules. We're still working on the, uh, through Sirius Link. So Sirius Link is the one who's doing a, um, some of those connectors there, but they're still working on the time series insights. Uh, one, I believe that's on the development schedule uh, and there are options today for site-wise. Uh, and so we're we're certainly interested in having that conversation if you need some orientation as to, to how all of that works. If we talk about visualization, access to this data um, and backups of the data, uh, the visualization through Ignition itself is pretty easy. So we have some options for easy chart, power chart for the different visualization modules that we have. Uh, if you're not familiar, we have vision and we have perspective as the two visualization systems. And we have charts in both of those that make it very easy to pull historical information. Uh, 8.1 also introduced the power chart, uh, which has in addition to having access to the tag historian data, it also has access to SQL data. If you set up a historian provider that is pointed at general SQL tables, uh, that can be a really nice thing to do if you want to tie into additional data sources that are coming from an enterprise that might not even be generated from Ignition. As long as the tables have a timestamp, uh, you can use that and you can also essentially filter on a column. You can have a where clause in there. Um, with a key value and a key um, key column properties that are part of those. Uh, also in the power chart, there's a uh, tag browser built directly in and annotations. And if we're talking about just visualization in general, tag historian generally is tied through and generates data for dashboards. Um, it has built-in aggregates uh, for time windows, um, some built-in aggregate analysis, min max, standard deviation, things like that, um, that can be set up for those time windows. Um, and then events inside those dashboards, if you're pulling from events uh, for showing, you can show those event uh, pieces of information, you can use those for time windows that you're actually doing these aggregates over. Um, certain events you might even aggregate over specific points inside the event tables there. And those tables are as easy to generate aggregates as it is to write a SQL query, which if you've ever written one, you know, um, for simple SQL queries is really easy. Uh, and then there's a number of folks who are doing machine learning as well. In Ignition, we have a variety of algorithms that are built directly into Ignition. Um, and it does take a little more expertise, but we have an example on our Ignition Exchange uh, where you can download a copy of that example. You can dig into it to understand how it works, and then you can apply those same techniques to your own projects. We do have some folks who are tying in from Ignition to external machine learning systems as well uh, and other AI systems. Uh, we have a few folks in our Discover Gallery and in our uh, different conferences over the years who've uh, submitted information about how they've uh, done that and how they've done some ML inside Ignition directly. Uh, so that can be a nice thing for customer projects as well. We're talking about access to the data. So we're talking about retrieval um, or visualization inside Vision. The SQL database and that event data is a direct connection from perspective or vision. Uh, and then the retrieval from the tag historian goes through the tag historian itself. Uh, and then that is directed behind the scenes to these engines. Uh, and so the SQL database engine, if you have your tag history going to SQL database, then it's going to pull it from there. Internal storage, it's going to pull from there. Other storage engines, um, it'll also pull from there, um, basically be a conduit back and forth for data. Uh, and then we did add another thing inside Ignition 8.1 called this historian simulator. Uh, which allows for history data to be pre-populated as if you'd had it running for a while. That historian simulator is a nice way to show off certain things and to also test out a system if you don't have 
uh, long periods of historical data already accessible when you first install something. Data accessibility is, so it's all accessible over SQL for things that are stored inside the SQL database. Uh, REST access, I mentioned quickly earlier, uh, but most folks, you need external access from modern systems, modern IT systems that speak REST will set up a RESTful endpoint. And you can do that through either the web dev module or the web services module and provide access to the system dot uh, tag dot query tag history uh, script function there. And that's going to allow for passing in and doing requests from anything for aggregates to raw data that's behind the scenes to pulling back uh, sets of data that are at a certain time range or has a different windows uh, that you're pulling in. Uh, and so that is a really nice way to make this data accessible uh, without anyone needing to write SQL queries directly against the database tables. Those database tables are there if they are needed uh, and they are documented. Uh, but it, it's generally nicer for those external systems to go over the rest. That way you don't have to worry about things like partitions and um, sets of tables and, and understanding the tables behind the scenes and reading up on the documentation. Uh, it's a fairly easy interface to go over. Data import and export, of course, can be done either through our visual tools uh, or through scripting behind the scenes. And that can be made accessible in any way that you make data accessible inside Ignition. Uh, so Ignition has about 100 ways to uh, expose data and to talk to external systems. Uh, some folks do database to database uh, transport. Some folks even go out to files that are being sent to individual other systems. Um, and a lot of folks do connectors to things like um, SAP even, um, other ERPs, other um, you know, other backend systems, uh, things like Tableau that they might be using for some additional reporting or um, really you name it. Uh, data modeling, I mentioned quickly earlier, uh, if you're going through to time series insights or if you're going through um, to, uh, to, to really any modeling system in the cloud or anything that has a model, um, as I said, SiteWise is the one that's available inside AWS. Um, there, those are becoming more popular and more interesting to us and to our users. And so those are things that um, the model comes over from Ignition if you're going into those. Uh, and that model would be your UDT model from Ignition or your object structure inside Ignition. Um, and that becomes accessible on that side. Of course, if you're modeling data inside Ignition, the data model is done with UDTs uh, with the user-defined types there. Um, and those models are yeah, accessible and you can see them easily in the tag browser. Uh, you can tie to those uh, with various screen design tools if you're building dashboards directly inside Ignition as well, of course. And then backup and archiving. If you're going to SQL in terms of the data storage, then that backup and archiving is done through SQL, through, through the data storage tools that are available in SQL. Microsoft SQL Server, for example, has some great tools um, and automated tasks that can run. And often that'll just tie into what an IT system already does. 